Hi, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Guardiola, but most of my students call me Dr. G. Today I want to talk about chromosome structure and how that changes through the process of cell division. So the learning outcomes for this video are for you to be able to describe the steps that occur as chromosome as a chromosome folds into chromatin and explain what is happening in a cell at each stage of the cell cycle. The second part will actually talk about homologous chromosomes, so you should be able to describe what homologous chromosomes are, as well as the role of homologous chromosomes in sexual reproduction, as well as differentiate between haploid and diploid cells. But first, let's start up with what is a chromosome. A chromosome is a molecule of DNA and its associated proteins. In prokaryotic cells, chromosomes are circular. Eukaryotic chromosomes are linear. The focus of this video is eukaryotic chromosome structure. One function of chromosomes is to organize DNA so that the cell can replicate and precisely distribute its DNA when it divides. But let's start off with why chromosomes are important in this context. Have you ever looked at a family photograph and wondered why some features are shared among some family members but not others? For organisms that reproduce sexually, the way in which individuals inherit chromosomes from their parents is responsible for the variation that you see among offspring. So, chromosomes contain the hereditary information that is passed on from one generation to the next. Multicellular organisms grow through the process of cell division, like this seedling, which started out as a fertilized egg. Single cell organisms, such as these bacteria, reproduce by cell division. As a cell divides, it must copy its DNA and then divide it such that the two resulting cells receive the correct amount of genetic information. Cells can precisely divide their DNA because it is organized into chromosomes. So chromosome structure is important for cell division to occur correctly. So what do chromosomes look like? These images are of prepared slides of onion root cells. Most cells and their structures are transparent if you look at them under the microscope. Biologists use different stains to visualize different parts of cells. The different dyes have an affinity for specific components of the cell. For these images, the DNA of the cells shows up as a dark bluish purple color. Take a minute to write down a description of what the DNA looks like to you in your own words. Don't worry about using any correct terms. For example, if I look at this first cell here on the left, I might write the following description. It looks like various pieces of thick string that are kind of straight, and others may be bent at funny angles. So part of the reason of why the DNA looks different in each cell is that the chromosome structure is different depending on whether or not the cell is dividing. And then chromosomes also look different during the process of cell division. So let's look at another example of chromosomes. Here we're looking at human chromosomes that have been stained and extracted from a dividing cell. A scientist can use this digital image to arrange the chromosomes by size, which is called a karyotype. Scientists use karyotypes to diagnose some genetic disorders based on the number of chromosomes or if the chromosomes are defective. We'll look at karyotypes in more detail when we talk about homologous chromosomes. If we zoom in on one of these chromosomes, you'll notice it sort of resembles the letter X. And here's a cartoon drawing of the chromosome. So why do chromosomes look like this? If you stretch out the DNA from one of your chromosomes, it would be about 4 centimeters long or about the length of this sticky tab. If you were to stretch out the DNA from all of your chromosomes in one cell, it would be about 6 feet long or 2 meters. Yet your cells package this amount of DNA into the nucleus, which is about the width of one-tenth of the human hairs that are shown in the magnifying glass. That's pretty amazing. So how do cells do this? Well, cells package the DNA in their chromosomes in a very ordered and specific manner. Each eukaryotic chromosome relies on specific proteins to help tightly condense the associated DNA. It's a bit like keeping a garden hose organized and compact by wrapping it around a hose reel. Imagine if you were trying to move several garden hoses around, say from one side of your house to the other, 
it would likely be a tangled mess if those hoses are spread out and laying on the ground. However, if each one of the hoses you are trying to move is wound around a hose reel, it isn't hard to move those around. So in this analogy, the hose reel functions like the proteins that help compact the DNA, and the hose represents the DNA in a chromosome. A cell changes how tightly it packages or condenses its chromosomes throughout the process of cell division. But for part of that process, chromosomes are highly condensed and visible under the microscope. By highly condensing its chromosomes, a cell can ensure that as it divides, the two cells that arise from that division have the correct amount of DNA, since cells of any particular organism contain a specific number of chromosomes. So let's take a look at chromosome structure during cell division in more detail. The cell cycle is a series of steps that occur in a cell that is dividing. The eukaryotic cell cycle includes two main steps or phases, interphase and mitosis. In interphase, cells grow, replicate their DNA, and prepare to divide. Interphase is shown by the pie pieces with a goldish color. Mitosis is the division of the nuclear content of the cell, which includes the DNA. Mitosis is further broken down into several steps based on the processes that are occurring in the cell. This is indicated by the pie pieces of various shades of blue. At the end of mitosis, cytokinesis typically occurs and is the division of the cytoplasm into two cells. In non-dividing cells and cells that are in interphase, the chromosomes appear as long, thin fibers. Under the microscope, you can't make out individual chromosomes, like in this onion cell shown here. Notice that the purple stain looks kind of like splotches. So this image here is showing us the chromatin inside a cell at interphase, and we are going to zoom in on one chromosome. So remember, in eukaryotic cells, chromosome here in interphase is a linear molecule of DNA and its associated proteins. So let's review some basics of DNA structure to understand how cells can package DNA into chromatin. So down here at the bottom of our figure you will see the familiar DNA double helix, which is made up of two strands of polynucleotides, and these strands are oriented in opposite directions. So my illustration is a little oversimplified, so it's hard to make out that they are in opposite directions. But as a reminder, a polynucleotide is basically a strand of many nucleotides, or a chain. So here in my drawing, you can start following this particular chain here. And each one of these is a nucleotide. And my figure legend down here shows you which color is corresponding to which of the nucleotides. Hydrogen bonding between the complementary base pairs is what keeps these two um, nucleotides together. If you were to completely unfold or unwind a chromosome, you will find that a chromosome can have several hundred to a few thousand genes along this molecule of DNA. So our bracket here is just supposed to indicate the location of one of those genes. So a gene is a hereditary unit that's made up of a specific nucleotide sequence that encodes for protein or RNA molecule. The first level of packaging or compacting occurs when DNA winds around uh, special proteins, which are these little gray circles here, called histones. You've got DNA wound around histones at regularly spaced intervals, and here you see these little units, and they are called nucleosomes. These nucleosomes look like little beads on a string, and that's basically a set amount of DNA wound around histones. The next level of compaction occurs when these nucleosomes coil to form a chromatin fiber. So you can see this chromatin fiber shown here. Histones play an important role in organizing this compaction. A lot of the DNA in a cell that's in interphase is found as chromatin.
fibers. And these fibers can be further compacted by forming loops onto scaffold proteins. So this little black thing here is supposed to represent a scaffold protein. Scaffold proteins are proteins that attach to loops of chromatin fiber. So at this point, if you were to look at your chromosome, you would describe it as being moderately compacted. If you look back here at nucleosomes, you might describe that as loosely compacted chromatin. Okay, so in interphase, your chromatin fibers are moderately compacted, and you can't really distinguish individual chromosomes. G1 marks the beginning of interphase. During this time, the cell grows and prepares for replicating its DNA. Each chromosome appears as a chromatin fiber made up of one molecule of DNA and the associated proteins that helps the chromosome stay in a moderately to loosely compact state. Here's the onion cell again as a reminder that you can't see individual chromosomes at this stage of the cell cycle. This little black squiggly mark represents a single molecule of DNA and the associated proteins that keep it in that moderately compacted state. Chromosome structure changes during S phase because all of the chromosomes replicate. That is, the cell makes an identical copy of each chromosome. A suite of enzymes control and carry out DNA replication, which is also called DNA synthesis since new DNA is made to create a copy of each chromosome. You may see the terms chromosome replication, DNA synthesis, and DNA replication used interchangeably since they describe the same process. At the end of S phase and throughout G2 phase, each chromosome is made up of two identical molecules of DNA and their associated proteins. You may hear these referred to as replicated, duplicated, or double chromosomes. Each molecule of DNA in a replicated or duplicated chromosome is called a sister chromatid as shown here. So here you see one sister chromatid and this is the second sister chromatid. The molecules of DNA are attached together at the centromere, which includes proteins that help keep the chromatids attached. At this point, you still can't see individual chromosomes inside the eukaryotic cell. Chromosomes appear as chromatin fiber throughout interphase. You can't make out individual chromosomes in the cell unless you dye them with a label that is specific to each individual chromosome. Even then, they appear diffuse, but are in distinct regions of the nucleus. That's what's shown in this image here at the bottom of the slide. A cell with each of its chromosomes has been labeled a different color, so you can make out different regions for different colors. You can think of it as a bowl of spaghetti, but rather than having the noodles all mixed up, if the noodles are representing chromosomes, each noodle is neatly separated from the other noodles. So that's what you see with the separate colors here. But some noodles may be sitting on top of each other, so that's why you see overlapping colors in that image. During S phase, chromosomes replicate, meaning the cell makes an identical copy of each chromosome. Each replicated or duplicated chromosome consists of sister chromatids attached at a centromere. Let's look at chromosomes at the beginning of mitosis. Let's look at some images from earlier in this presentation. The human chromosomes on the left were stained and extracted from a cell. On the right is an onion cell a bit further along in mitosis. At this point in the onion cell, those chromosomes are starting to line up at the middle of the cell. The cartoon chromosome shown here has the characteristic shape we typically associate with mitotic chromosomes. It is replicated, and recall that that happened in S phase. Sister chromatids are still attached at the centromere. The main difference between G2 and the beginning of mitosis is that these chromosomes are highly condensed. So let's return to our cartoon of a eukaryotic cell. This one is actually at the beginning of mitosis. And if we look in the nucleus, this region here, you will see condensed chromosomes. So how does the chromatin that we looked at in interphase end up in these highly condensed structures? The moderately compacted chromatin that you see in a eukaryotic cell in interphase is due to the fact that these chromatin fibers are looped around scaffold proteins. So the cell prepares to divide at mitosis. This is condensed 
even further to give you this highly compacted chromatin structure. So this entire structure is a replicated chromosome, or you may also hear it referred to as a duplicated chromosome. Replicated or a duplicated chromosome is made up of two identical copies of DNA and their associated proteins. Each copy of DNA is called a sister chromatid. So we can label those on our chromosome here. So here, this is one sister chromatid, and this other side is the other sister chromatid. So a replicated chromosome, or a duplicated chromosome, is made up of two sister chromatids, and this little region here, which is holding them together, is the centromere. So the centromere is a small section of DNA and its associated proteins, and they attach chromatids together. The purpose of cell division is for one cell to replicate its genetic information and distribute it evenly between the two resulting cells. At the end of mitosis, sister chromatids separate from each other. We now call them chromosomes. If you look at the cartoon chromosome at the bottom of the slide, you can still see that it is highly condensed. This chromosome is made up of one molecule of DNA and its associated proteins. The onion cell at the bottom of the slide shows the resulting chromosomes after sister chromatids are separated. This is one of the later stages of mitosis. The schematic on the right shows what happens to one chromosome during mitosis. During mitosis, chromosomes are highly compacted or condensed. At the beginning of mitosis, chromosomes are in a replicated state. Each identical copy of DNA is called a sister chromatid. Sister chromatids are attached at a special region of the DNA along with special proteins. Together, this region is called the centromere. Sister chromatids separate towards the end of mitosis and are now called chromosomes. Each chromosome at the end of mitosis contains one molecule of DNA and its associated proteins. Here's another way to summarize how chromosomes look during the cell cycle. First, you can describe how condensed the chromatin is. In interphase, if we look across the first row of the table, chromosomes are unwound. Other ways you may see this described is as moderately condensed, moderately packaged, or moderately compacted. These terms are synonymous. In mitosis, which is the bottom row of the table, when we describe chromosomes, you often hear them described as being tightly wound or highly condensed or packaged. Another thing that occurs during the cell cycle is DNA replication. So how much genetic information is in the cell varies depending on what part of the cell cycle you're looking at. During G1 of interphase and at the end of mitosis, each chromosome is one molecule of DNA and its associated proteins. So you can see that in the schematic of the cell cycle on the bottom lower left here. And then here if we look at this part of the table, you'll see our unreplicated single chromosome. Chromosomes replicate during S phase, so at the end of S phase, throughout G2 phase, and at the beginning of mitosis, each chromosome is made up of two identical copies of DNA with their associated proteins. So here you can see the replicated chromosome as you'd see it at the end of S phase and through G2 phase, and here it is at the beginning of mitosis when it is highly condensed. I hope this has been a helpful introduction to chromosome structure.